All right. So I believe we're live, David. Let's just give it a second to see if I can see it on Twitch. But how are you doing today anyway? I'm doing really good, man. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I can't complain. Uh, what time is it over there where you are right now? It's quite early, huh? Yeah, it's um, 6 a.m. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, for e everybody that's here, you know, Johan, I can't see. I'm on Twitch, and I can't see B -port, that B-Port's live. I don't want to make it awkward here, but I'm not able to see the live feed on Twitch. So if you just want to let me know what's going on. Okay, okay. he's saying it. we're 100% live. So here we go. All right. So what's up, everybody? My name is Joshua Casper. I am the digital media person for Plugin Boutique, and it is our second monthly takeover of Bport's Twitch. Uh, last last month, we were with Jordan Young, who is a mastering engineer for some of the A-list people out there in the world, like Beyonce and Jay-Z. And today, we're going down the developer rabbit hole with my good friend, David Carbone, who is the mastermind behind one of my favorite plugins and one of the best plugins of, of quite a few years called Scalar. Uh, David is an absolute gent, and I'm very excited to have him here. So everybody, please welcome David Carbone. David, if you just want to jump in and kind of give us uh, an intro to yourself and a little bit maybe about your background and what the inspiration or what got you started with Scalar 2, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what Scalar 2 is after that. Um, yeah, so yeah, my name is David Carboni. Um uh, I basically started as a DJ in the late 80s Melbourne um, and uh, did quite a lot of house and techno earlier on um, and then uh, got into drum and bass, moved to England, um, started doing a lot more production work and composition work, ran a label, came back here, started a music school here being Australia um, and uh, at that uh, School of Synthesis, I met uh, Edouard Amenier, who um, is a developer, um, a very talented French developer. And we kind of, I talked about an idea I'd always had, which was not coming from a background of music theory. I always wondered why when I'm writing a riff or doing a riff on a 303 or writing something on a keyboard, why there was no software that would come up and kind of say, well, you're in this key, here's the chords that you could try and use. And uh, when I mentioned that to Ed, who was studying um, at the School of Synthesis, he kind of said, well, actually, I've got a similar idea. I've got this kind of little web app, and it kind of does this and this. And I was like, well, could we make this plugin? And he said, sure. So Scalar was born. Um, I've known Matt um, Pelling um, from Loop Masters and Plugin Boutique for a, a long time. He's a lovely guy and um, friend of mine, and I kind of took him the idea. So says, sounds great. So then all the Plugin Boutique, Gareth... Uh, got involved and the, the, it, it, uh, it grew basically. Um, and um, yeah, it grew from being something that effectively just detects what you do into this, <laughs> I don't know. I like to sometimes say Siri for music theory, you know. Um. <laughs> it even rhymes. It's a nice little catch uh, tagline there. I had a, I mean, a question. You're, you're kind of talking about how it got started and what you were aiming for. But at this point, like you said, it's really, really um, robust in terms of features. And I was just wondering if you could give the people here watching who might not be, um, you know, uh, producing every day or, you know, someone out there that's producing for the entire world, like a major laser type of person, if you could give me like a elevator pitch sort of for a beginner, someone in the intermediate level or someone who's a, more of an advanced composer, producer, of why they might want to check out Scalar. So maybe on those three different levels, because um, like I said, there really is some just entry level stuff there, but then you can get into that modulation page. And I mean, I'll let you talk about it. Maybe, maybe if you could do that for us, just so we have a better idea of what we're going to be checking out today. Um, well, look, at a, at a basic level, um, it can detect what you're doing and tell you the potential scales that you could be in. Um, you can also start by, you know, selecting song styles. You could go to drum and bass or EDM and you have a, a bunch of 
predefined chord progressions. You can go to selected artists from Carl Cox to CC Rogers. Uh, CC even gave us his chords to someday in there. Um, you can then start to kind of move your chords down into your progression builder and then you can start to um, create your own chords, edit chords, use suggested chords. You can then do multi-lane chord progressions and then you can modulate. So, so basically it's, it's something that enables you to harmonically enrich a tune um, and allow Scalar to do lots of the work for you and take the theory out. Not only that, but we've got lots of, um, which I'm gonna go through today, uh, performances in terms of phrases, rhythms, bass, melodies, and sequences. So as per this demo today, if you've got a chord progression, um, you can you can make a melody, you can make a sequence, you can make all the different rhythms and um, harmonic elements that you would in a tune just by having the one chord progression. So. Um, for comp, comp, lots of high-end composers like to use it because it's a real good sketch pad for them. They can get in and find chord extensions and use modulations. Um, lots of new up-and-coming producers like to use it because it's really easy to kind of go, okay, these are the scales, here's some chords, this is how I can make it interesting. And we have, I mean, the, the greatest thing about Scalar is the people that use it. I mean, we've got you know people I've idolized for my whole life um, using it. Um, and we've just got young producers that uh, pick it up and do amazing stuff with it absolutely phenomenal so you're going to be doing a demo for us today um, do you just want to give us kind of a summation of what that demo is going to be and then i'll let you get into it but before you jump actually right into it i want to go ahead and give a copy of scalar away to the people watching so maybe let's just get a summary of of the demo to come i'll, gr I'll give away a copy and then i'll just let you be free to show us what you got for us today yeah, so basically what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show how um, Scalar is known for creating chord progressions um, and the chord progression we're going to start with actually made in Scalar, but it could just be a MIDI file. So you could have gone to Loop Cloud, picked up a MIDI file, um, brought it in and go, okay, that sounds good. These chords sound good. What do I do? And so what I'm going to demonstrate is just that with one chord progression, you can just move it to lots of different scalars and allow scalar to create all the individual parts. I'm making a drum and bass tune because I think, you know, some of the Beatport audience like to listen to drum and bass. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate. And I think the important thing here is is to note that, um, you know, you can't, um, you can't copyright chord progressions. You can copyright melodies. So you're welcome to go and explore and find chord progressions that you like. There's millions available online and then just bring them into scalar and start allowing Scalar to create all those things that define what a tune is, a melody, a bass line, a sequence. So yeah, so that's effectively what I'm going to demonstrate. Wonderful. Uh, I'm just trying to see, we're gonna give away a copy of Scalar right now before you jump into that. I'm very excited to hear and see what you've got in store for us. So people who are watching, if you want a copy of Scalar to try out on your own, go ahead and just let us know in the chat right now where you're from, where you're watching from, and we're gonna pick one person at random and hook you up with uh, a copy of Scalar at the end of the stream, and I will announce the winner at the end of the stream as well. So uh, go ahead and do that now. Let us know where you're from, where you're watching from. And um, with that, David, I'll let you go ahead and take it away and show us what Scalar can do. Okay, thanks very much. Um Joshua, okay. Uh, so yeah, so you can see here I've got a chord progression. I'm just gonna get rid of um, the, uh, the scalar and pull up that chord progression. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty elaborate chords. I mean, they're triads just with lots of extensions, but whatever, let's just say we've got a MIDI file. Um, if we listen to it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, you can see that those chords are playing through Scalar, so, um, and it's uh, triggering Scalar's internal felt piano. So now um, we're in detect mode, so I'm actually going to ask Scalar to record and detect what those chords are and what Scalar could be. So now I've hit the record button in Scalar, I'm just going to play through again. You can see the chords coming up in Scalar.
Great. So the first thing to note is that Scalar has correctly told me that um, I'm likely to be in any of the scales that you can see here. Uh, C Lydian or A Dorian modes are the most likely because it matches six to eight of those chords. And it's actually grayed out the A sharp um, major here because they don't belong to that scale. And that's common in music theory in that you can have a borrowed chord. Um, and Scalar is telling you the I've selected C Lydian mode and, and Scale is telling you the chords that belong to C Lydian mode. And correctly, it's saying, well, that doesn't. It should be A minor or G major. So it's a borrowed chord um, or even a passing chord. So great. Okay, cool. Uh, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to come out of detect mode. Um, I'm just going to pull um, uh, those chords straight down to my progression builder. Um, and then I'm going to bind this section, which means that I could effectively mute those chords now and using my keyboard I can actually trigger uh, just by using um, one finger great okay um, so uh, we're doing um, we're doing um, drum and bass um, here so you can see that I've actually uh, already got um, some vocals and some some drums uh, up here um, Cool. So we'll start working alongside um, those. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, copy uh, that scalar across. Um, um, so I'm just going to copy it to another channel. Uh, and I'm going to record uh, those notes in. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'll bring the drums and I'll just record just by using the, um, the trigger notes. Okay, so you'll have noticed that it's obviously quite soft. That's all cool. Uh, just get rid of the scaler there. I'm going to select uh, all those trigger notes. That's what I recorded. So they're triggering the actual scales. Uh, I'm going to solo that section. Now I'm going to pull up that scaler and I'm going to say, uh, okay, rather than just play the straight chords, um, uh, let me just make sure I'm on the right scaler here. Uh, that'll do. That's better. Um, Okay. Yeah, so w what we'll do is we're going to choose another internal sound. So we're going to go for the hybrid staccato. Yep, cool. Um, so rather than uh, just going to shorten those notes just ever so slightly, um, rather than go for, say, the straight chordal pattern, I'm going to go to Scalar and, and ask it to start performing those chords, if you like. So if I look at performances, I'm going to go to Rhythms. And Rhythms just effectively will take the chord and just break it up. Yeah, cool. Um, all right, so I'm in the Undante category. The, the Rhythms uh, Italian musical expressions, but basically from kind of slowest to fastest. So slow is good because I'm at 172 BPM. Um, I'm going to grab the Sonata. Yep, so, okay, good start with the drums. Yep, cool, good. Um, so that's fine. So Scalar's already playing those chords. Now it's playing it on those rhythms. Um, over here, uh, I've just got a pad patch. Um, uh, just going to mute those drums for a sec. And uh, the pads, just, just some straight pads um, from Contact. Yep, okay, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to pull a Scalar um on to uh the as a midi effect so it's effectively going to control that contact so just routing scalar through um all the door uh, scalar can be routed to any vst um in any door uh, logic makes it easy by using midi effects um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um uh, say come up to the original scalar uh, or actually even the scalar rhythm here and i'm going to uh, right click up the top and i'm going to I'm going to sync um, the progression builder 
in section C. So that is my section down the bottom. And I'm going to say, can you please add that to all the scalars? So what that effectively uh, should do, theoretically, is when I open up, uh, there it is there, actually, you can see it. Um, when I open it up uh, in this new MIDI effect, there's my chord progression down the bottom. One of the nice things about Scalar is when you're altering your um, chord progressions down the bottom, you can always just right click and redetect. Um, so if you make a change, like if I was to change that A sharp major, you could redetect and it'll, it's always live coming up and telling you. Um, great, so now that theoretically should just play those chords across those pads. Let's have a listen. Oh, oh that's because what I need to do I've just, is copy down those trigger notes. Okay, so I'm just going to keep using those trigger notes across different scalars. Um, so there's the pads. Yeah, just playing those chords across those pads. Cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, now, there's, you can see here, I want to get, and I want to add an ARP, I want to add a sequence, and I want to add a bass line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with a melody. Now, Scalar has lots of melodies internally, but it also encourages you to kind of try and create your own melody. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to write my own with the help of Scalar. I'm going to copy that MIDI effect across. Um, now, um, here... Um, Scalar is now controlling a uh, an instance of Plugin Boutique's uh, Carbon Electra. Uh, this is a really simple patch. I won't bother going to recreate, but it's literally just a pulse wave, and the modulation envelope is assigned to the filter. So effectively, snapping that filter shut. Um, you know, pretty simple, pretty simple patch uh, with a little bit of delay on it. Uh, now, the first thing is if I copy. Uh, those trigger chords across, Scalar will now play those chords on that patch. Yep, cool. Uh, now what I'd like to do is I, I would like to change that rhythm. I could have Scalar change the rhythm, uh, or of course now, because I've got those trigger notes down here, I could change the rhythm myself, couldn't I? You know, I could go more... Uh, So that's what I might do. Uh, I might just uh, bring the drums in so I can hear that. Yep, cool. Um, so effectively, I'm going to write in my own rhythm just by recording those trigger notes. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to write a melody. Now, uh, just so you can see this a little bit better, I'm going to come into a different view here and I'm going to bring up um, the keyboard. Yep, I'll, I'll enlarge that. So this is what I'm playing on my musical keyboard, okay? Um, just so you can see. Yeah, so you can see I'm just playing one note there. Okay, I'll move it across here. Yep, good. Um, so uh, now I'm going to pull up that scalar. Um, and what I'm going to do is... Um, I just want you to know that um, what I'm playing in my right hand is just the natural. So right now I'm playing C, D, E. Now it just, it just so happens that I'm in C Lydian mode, right? So if I was just to continue playing C, D, E and run through the chords, they would work because C, D, E belongs to Lydian mode. But you notice that I'm only just playing CDE. It's not very interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Scalar help me here. I'm going to go into Keys Lock. And I'm going to, there's several profiles, but I'm going to use the chord extensions. And what that's going to do is the CDE, it's going to lock it to the chord that I'm playing. So it will move according to the chord. So if I hit the first chord. Yeah, second chord. You can hear it moving. And I'm just still just playing that CDE. You can see on the white keyboard down the bottom. So what I might do is I might do a pattern where I just go C, D, E, E, D, C, C, D, E, E, D, C. It won't sound interesting if I just do that, but with Scalar in chord extension mode, if I do that pattern and run through the chords, you'll see um, that it'll create an interesting melody because it's effectively locking them and moving them around with the chord. Um, um, okay. 
Here's going to be the hard part. Let me try and record this. Um, so I'm going to do, effectively in the left hand, I'm going to be doing that rhythm of triggering the chord. And in the right, I'm going to be going C, D, E. Next chord, E, D, C. Next chord, C, D, E. Okay, let's go. Let's see how we go. Not a great player. Right, that is not what I wanted to do. Performance jitters. hear the drums took off there because that's where we're going to go all right so uh, now I'm going to close this keyboard come back to uh, the main page uh, let's have a look at those notes just so you can see what I did um, they're the trigger they're playing the chords and this is playing the melody and you can see that C D E E D C C D E E D C now if I played it with uh, close to anything and I hit the quantize button that should now all be in time I'll probably have to make some adjustments so let's have a listen <laughs> Incredible. All those years performing, I wish I could have performed as well as that. Um, yeah, so everything's on the on the money. So let's just have a look and let's refresh ourselves and see what's happening here. Okay, uh, I'm going to unhide. Um, uh, so basically, we took the original chords. We've now uh, created a rhythm. Um, uh, we've got some pads. Um, and now we've got those chords, but I've just played them in that rhythm and I've also matched it with that... Um, um, uh, with that melody. So let's just have a look at Scala doing that there. Yeah. And you can see that Scala is actually, um, the green section is, is where it's moving. Kind of hard to show, but you can see it's locked. So that's great. So now I've got a melody. Um, okay, cool. So now I'm going to create an ARP. Um, make this nice and simple I'm gonna grab the uh, scalar that was controlling the pads I'm gonna move it to another carbon electro patch um, down here uh, this is exactly the same patch just the filters closed a little bit more um, and now I'm going to pull those trigger notes again it's going to play the chords uh, on that new carbon electro let's solo it so we can hear it um, okay, and, and here I'm, um, it's playing again that new card lecture, it's playing the chords, but I'm going to go to another performance and I'm just going to go straight to arpeggio. Nothing revolutionary, just straightforward. It's just going to play uh, eighth note arpeggios. Now, because the chords are quite rich and there's a lot of notes, it sounds nice because it's kind of trawling across all those chords. Remember, um, just to remind you, that these are the chords that we're effectively triggering. So you can see there's a lot of notes there. So the ARP's going through each individual note of those chords. Um, okay, cool. So now we've got a little ARP section. We've got a melody section. We've got pads. We've got rhythm. So it gives us lots, um, lots to play with. I'm going to move those trigger notes down to... Um, I've got a Roland 303 um, software plug-in here. Um, and we're gonna now um, use it. Um, and now I might, uh, I might try, I could use this up. Um, uh, where are we here? Yeah, could use that up on the 303 as well, but I'm actually gonna go into sequences. And sequences are really good for monophonic instruments like the 303. Um, um, and in sequences, uh, you've got basic sequences and ostinatos pretty much the same thing really the basic is just kind of very basic very few notes and ostinatos are kind of like phrases if you like they're like arpeggios but they can use notes outside the chord uh, let's go for ostinato one yep okay cool so there's another harmonic element
Okay, cool. Um, so obviously we're not going to have all that stuff playing. Um, and in the little demo, I'll, I'll quickly do an arrangement. But w what we clearly need is we need some some bass. Um, so what I'm going to do is here I've got Loop Master's Bass Master. Um, great little plug-in. Um, and I'm going to move those trigger notes across. Um, and you guessed it, I'm going to pull Scalar across to that channel now. Um, so that's now going to be controlling that. That's going to be playing that same sequence. Uh, if we solo it, where are we here? Um, yeah. Um, and Scalar does everything, if you like. Um, and one thing, of course, it does is bass. Uh, so I'm going to go into bass mode. Uh, there's lots and lots of bass presets. I'll just make that a little bit bigger so you can see that. Um, um, we've got you know, common basses, funk basses, house basses lots of different bass lines and again it's just interpreting those chords and it's just monophonically playing that so it's taking the root note the bass note if you like um, and playing it i'm going to go i'm going to go basic two yep cool uh if i was to kind of get rid of everything Um, cool. Um, what I want to do is I want to vary that bass line a little bit and, and Scalar can help me do that. So if I pull the Scalar back up, um, it's just playing that straight um, bass line. But if I now go into edit mode, one of the nice things about edit mode is you can change. You've, you've got chord edit mode where you can edit the individual chords and you've got edit mode, which ena enables me to kind of change the bass pattern on each chord. So right now we're just playing basic two um, and you can see in playback performances here, they're all set to global. But for this second chord, I wanna play a different bass line. So I'm gonna put it in group one. Um, uh, actually, sorry, I've got them all highlighted. So I'll come back in here, uh, select only this guy um, and put the second one in group one. And I'm gonna say, don't play basic two. Uh, let's, go, let's go and play straight two. So you can see the first bass will play basic two, and the second chord, I should say, will play straight two. Yeah, so it's changed the pattern, so that's really cool. Um, and also, I'm gonna say, actually, you know what, play that at half time, that second one. So here we go, and now into half time of that same. Yeah, cool, and now it's gonna play the normal chords. What I might do is I might come over here, put the fourth chord in group two, and say, yeah, play that pattern again straight to, but instead of half time, play it in normal time. So we'll get the original basic two bass pattern, straight two at half time, back to basic two, straight two at full time. Let's have a listen. Cool, now with any luck, I should, uh, I've also got just a sub bass here from Rob Papin's um, sub boom bass. I should be able to copy that exact scalar across. And if we open it now, that's now assigned. Yep, it's copied across all the material. It's now also controlling um, the sub boom bass. If we have a listen. Yep, okay, cool. Uh, let's have a listen. Um, now, I just did notice that that bass was slightly off, and there you go, when I initially recorded those notes, those trigger notes, uh, one was off, and you won't notice, of course, until you actually uh, play a bass line. Um, so what we might do is uh, we might recopy those all the way across up here, make sure we've got the right notes. Hopefully that hasn't messed everything up and I don't have to start again and bore you all. But cool, that should be all the elements. Let's have a listen. We're not going to have them all playing at once, but let's have a listen, make sure it's all right. Cool, yep. Sounds good. Something's definitely off here. Have I missed more? Uh-huh. They're not quantized for some reason. Okay. 
There you go. That should work much better. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to start arranging. I've also got a vocal pattern, but just let's just make a quick one-minute tune, which we can imagine we would extend. Uh, let's get this uh, the original rhythm, which is... Yeah, and let's put that... I'm going to call this the intro, this the drop, this the second drop, and that the outro. Uh, let's get uh, the pads, uh, which are just the straight pads here. Um, and let's put them at the intro in the second drop and the outro, if you like. Uh, let's get the melody. Cool. I'm going to put it for the first three sections. But for the drop, just to make it a little bit deeper, uh, I might say uh, only trigger the chords. Don't trigger the actual uh, melody. You can see that now. Just play just the chords. Yep, cool. That's what I wanted. Um, now for the up, I might say the up uh, play, play in the intro and the outro. Uh, that 303 sequence, just play it on the second drop just to give it a bit of variety. And the bass lines, let's put it in the drop. Um, and let's put it um, in the second drop here. Uh, okay, so now if we mute, uh, unmute everything, um, let's just have a listen to that through. I'll leave the vocals off for now. What I might start doing is also the whole point of this is now that Scale has really created all those elements, um, I'm going to go to the Carbon Electra patch uh, and I just start giving it a bit of variety. So by moving the cutoff filter and the modulation envelope. The move the attack. Yeah, okay, so I'll just start doing that as we kind of drive through. And then comes the bass line, the big beats. to the ARP, scalar controlling the ARP, I've gone to that, you know, now I can just kind of play with those elements. And you'll see it'll cycle around. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually introduce the vocals. Um, and they're just straight vocals that I knew were in C major and just chucked them in because I knew they would work. Um, so just before I flick over back to Joshua, I just want to just explain all that. I know it was rushed, and if you don't know Scalar, you're probably like, what's this guy doing? If you're even still there watching. Um, but uh, basically, we just took a chord progression. 
and we fed it in a scalar and said, scalar, can you please make a melody out of this? Um, now, I could have made a melody, could have just gone to a melody preset and would have spat me out a melody, but I, I said, use the chord extensions to help me, even though I can't really play, attach every note in my right hand to the chord. So that helped me create my own melody just by using a pattern. And then of course I created a bass line, I created the sequence, I created the arpeggiator um, and all the other elements. Okay, I'm gonna bring um, Joshua back in. Um, did you hear all that? Did that make any sense? And are you still with us? <laughs> yes, I'm here. I was, I was muted, sorry. I didn't want to uh, have my heavy breathing uh, ruining your demo, which was absolutely phenomenal, by the way. Thank you. I did. You hadn't played it for me before you did it, but it was it was fantastic, and it was it's a pretty much I would say and by the way of ideas, it's a fully sculpted idea of a drum and bass track, and you knocked it out in I think 20 minutes, maybe even less. Uh, it was essentially you know you've kind of got the idea there, and Scalar just helps you get to where you want to be uh, very quickly and easily as as it seems. Obviously, you had that plan from the beginning, but me personally having hands-on with Scalar quite often, um, it is that quick when you're generating ideas sometimes. You just get in and once you can just start duplicating Scalar and using melodies, using the chord extension um, guides, getting into even modulation, changing key in the, you know, for your chorus, like it, sh it really is that powerful. And I think you really showcased it there for your demo. So, so props to you, obviously Thank you're you. the man to go to for these types of things, but. Um, for the people watching, if you have any questions about Scalar or about David in general, I mean, now's the time to ask. I think we're running a giveaway right now, too. Just let me, let me see. There's a code you can put in Twitch. I'm kind of new to Twitch, David, so forgive me. There's a bot that handles this. I, I'm new to bots. But if you type in um, exclamation point giveaway, you'll be entered in to win a free copy of Scalar 2 um, to try out in your DAW. Is there any other um, sort of highlights of Scalar that you didn't get to showcase in the demo, David, that you just think people should know about? Look, I, I, I mean, you know it, you know, almost as well as I do, Joshua. There's, there's, it's really deep program. I think the thing to, to note with Scalar is that it started off as something very simple and Ed and I have just, um, We've got now got a fantastic, not only do we have Plugin Boutique and Beatport and Loopmasters and all of you guys constantly contributing, but we actually have a community forum and there are tens of thousands of people on there who are always giving us suggestions. So if we like a suggestion, we just do it. Ed is one of the most gifted um, uh, developers. He's also a musician. He's fantastic. He's really enthusiastic, as enthusiastic as I am. So him and I just, you know, jump on a phone, um, have a meet and say, how about this feature? Uh, yeah, cool, let's do it this way. And we get really excited and Scalar's become kind of a, uh, you know, um, um, so big and so complicated that what it really needs is a, an, an overhaul of the whole user experience, which is what we're working on now. But yeah, going back to Scalar, I mean, there's so much. Really, uh, the videos that you and I make are a great place to start. Um, if I was to go back to my guest feed and, you know, pull up a scalar. Um, where, where can people find, I know that people can find a wealth of video tutorials that I have done on Plugin Boutique's YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and search for Plugin Boutique, there's a massive playlist there. But where can people find some of the tutorials you've put out on your own? Um, the School of Synthesis YouTube channel. I think if you just kind of look in YouTube and look for Scalar 2, you'll see that uh, I run a music production school here in Melbourne called the School of Synthesis, as I mentioned before. So we do free Scalar tutorials. Um, so we do them for Plugin Boutique and we host them on our own channel. I think it, the channel is called um, School of Synthesis YouTube forward slash C forward slash School of Synthesis. So there's plenty there and we're constantly updating. And there's also the Scalar plugin um, YouTube channel, which has lots of kind of smaller um, uh, tutorials on on features. But I think the best thing to do is to go and join the Scalar plugin community and start asking questions because um, you'll get lots of people answering. And it is a very, very deep program. And what I suggest is start from the beginning, start from the overview video. Um, and really, you know, it's either you're coming up and creating your own chords, you're detecting what you're doing as I did before, 
Um, you're starting off with songs, preset songs. Uh, you're going for artists and you're just bringing things down here and you're kind of starting to work out how the progression um, uh, section C works. You can MIDI capture, you can drag chord progression straight in, you know, we're like we could have just dragged. There you go, we dragged those chords in. It sh it, so it's just, and then you can modulate, you can use variations. There's so many little hidden things like, you know, um, probably some of my most favorite features and I can just, uh, oops, I didn't mean to sync. I wanted to clear that. Um, so clear state. Um, some of my, you know, um, uh, favorite features is just being able to choose a scale and say, oh, okay, C minor, I've heard that's good. Yep, good, these are the chords. Um, now, you know, they're triads on their own. They're not really interesting, but immediately you can go to some of the voice grouping profiles, which basically groups all the notes together and thickens them up. So straight away, you've got that instant, wow, they sound much better. Lots of profiles in there. And then if we turn that off, I, I love the voicings. Um, and the voicings are just um, how the chords might be played by different artists. Um, and they're, they're really cool ways to just start off with the most boring and straightforward of scales, you know, and create tunes. Um, so, yeah, so j just at a very, very basic, basic way, um, um, that's probably, and then of course, if you look at, always think of your navigation, learn each page one by one. Joshua? 100%. It, there's also the the presets you've got there too. You've got presets from some really well-known producers. Carl Cox, for one, I believe, has a set in there or a few sets. Uh, you can also find some presets by genre, and of course, presets in Scalar Two are just like presets in any other synth that you'd find, and that is they're a starting point to see if there's something spicy there that you like, and then you can take it. And because of the the modular nature of scalar and how much control you have over each one of the the chords themselves or whether or not you turn it into a sequence or a melody uh, you have full control and of course once you like you said just a second ago bring that midi into your daw you have absolute full control if you want to take anything out add anything do whatever so um, it is a really robust program someone was asking if they're just starting with music theory if uh, scalar is a good learning resource and i'm actually going to field that one if you don't mind because uh, I actually am, I'm still a novice. I consider myself a novice, but because of how, many, how much work I've had to do putting out material for Scalar 2 and using Scalar 2 in my own projects just over and over and over again, I know uh, just years, I would maybe not, you know, yeah, let's say years ahead of where I was before just because I've had to learn modulation. I don't even know what Romanian, neo Romanian modulation was. But now I have that in the bank, and I know I can use it for cinematic sound, uh, sound uh, progressions and so on. So um, Eslada 27, I would say absolutely. If you're just trying to learn or if you just need a little bit of help to get started, Scalar 2 is absolutely a plug-in you want in your toolbox. But if you have anything more to add to that, David, by all means. Uh, look, exactly that. You know, that's why we made Scalar. We made it so you wouldn't, ha theory is just theory. It's just, you know, some people have gone, oh, this all sounds good together, this works together. So it's a theory. Um, music comes from your heart. So what we really wanted to do, I mean, the tagline is empower the composer within. And I think that's really what we intended. This plugin was made for me 15, 20 years ago when I had absolutely no idea where C was on the keyboard. And, you know, I truly believe that you know this would would help and yeah and it, what that's what the lovely thing about scalar is you can just you don't have to think it's like tetris you just start moving blocks together but you're actually it's a live ecosystem it's all you just by second nature you start going oh, okay that's a scale these are chords that belong to that scale now i can as you say you can modulate and you do i i my theory has come along a, a long way and yours has come along incredibly as well in the time that we've been working together with scalar a way I might um, talk about modulation just for other people. I know that Beatport's Twitch is usually just you know DJs doing what DJs do, that it, it mix records. Uh, when I was first getting started DJing and mixing records, when I learned about mixing in key, completely transformed my sets. And that is if you have two tracks that are harmonically similar, they fit together so much better. When you make that nice blend, when the melodic content is speaking the same language as it were 
uh, the blend just becomes that next level. And with something like Scalar 2, when you jump into modulation, you can figure out how to do a scale uh, or a key change for your chorus of your track. It just opens that up to the, that next level of just awesomeness that's possible. And using a tool like Scalar 2 just makes it easy uh, because it shows you modulate. And as you were saying, even people with uh, heavy classical trained uh, theory in their background still use Scalar 2 because they don't want to have to sit to break out. You know, even still, you got to break out the notebook and see what certain things modulate to what and so on and so forth. But Scalar 2 has it all right there at a, a few clicks of the button. So. Uh, that's just another way to to think about it. So, um, absolutely phenomenal plugin, David. You know that. I every time we talk, I tell you that, that I love it. And uh, tell Ed I said hello. Um, I haven't seen him since the last stream we did on the Plugin Boutique channel. Also, everybody who's watching, uh, scale is it scalarplugin.com is where people can find not only some of your video content, my video content, but also the forum. Yes, yeah, scalarplugin.com. Um, that's that's the uh, the forum. You, if you go to scalarplugin.com, you'll get the retail outlet, which will take you off to Plugin Boutique, and then you'll get the forum outlet, and then you can just basically start posting. Um, there's lots of tutorials online, um, and yeah, scalarplugin.com definitely a good place to start. Yeah. Wonderful. So everybody who's here, if there are any more questions, now's the time. If you still want to enter that giveaway, uh, we're going to be announcing the winner very shortly. So to do that, it's exclamation point giveaway. And um, David, I'm going to let you wrap it up. If there's anything else you want to let people know or say about Scalar. Um, no, thank you very much to our users. Um, uh, yeah, it's an incredible honor to be able to make however small a contribution um, to um, making music making easier um and we're we're very committed over the next you know however long ed and i and the rest of the team there's lots of us lots of us involved um uh into making it bigger and greater and easier to use i think it's become such a behemoth that what we really want to do is go back and simplify it and keep all the features but make it all accessible so basically lots of extremely exciting developments ios scalar iterations we've got a 2.4.1 update coming next week, which has lots of content and um, some seriously good timing adjustments, which just make it rock solid. Then we've got a major 2.5 update coming later this year, which is really focused on guitar because there's obviously the guitar fretboard as well. Um, so lots of very, very exciting things uh, that we're really, really excited to share with, with, our, with our users. And thank you, Joshua um, and Beatport for arranging today. Oh, of course. We're, we're happy to have you, as always. Um, and you were saying there you got 2.4 out right now. You said 2.5 is coming shortly. Is that Yeah, so 2.4 2, 2. 2. was out, and 2.4.1, which is a small point update, but it does actually feature uh, lots of new performances. Um, and, oh, okay. um, and we've really refined the timing and a lot of the minor bug fixes. It's become very solid, and wh we're very critical of it because I use Scala in my day-to-day -day, um, work here at Samplify. So 2.4.1 next week, 2.5 Q3 later this year, major update, uh, lots of new guitar features, cage fretboard, the cage system, everything working much better uh, in terms of guitar, really focused on guitar. Um, and then of course, uh, we have an iOS app coming very soon. And then we have, we are always working on future major overhauls of um, Scala. Okay, so a couple questions. We, I don't think we really mentioned this, the, the sound set that actually comes with Scalar. Not only does Scalar provide MIDI that you can route to your favorite VSTIs, but you actually have a really solid sound set that ships with it, almost almost like any other instrument. Are you going to be adding any new guitar sounds in uh, 2.5? Yeah, I'm that's just scrolling. more for me personally. No, that's okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good question because um, the guitars are guitar is a very very hard instrument now at Samplify we make lots of patches for lots of software instrument companies and we know that guitars are really really hard to make um, so we you can see me scrolling through some of the sounds their internal sounds uh, we're not really happy with the way guitars work at the moment and that's partly you know Scalar is a uh, you know it's a 50 US dollar plug-in and it does a lot it's also a synth it's also a sampler we'd love it to be the greatest synth and sampler in the world uh, and we are looking at increasing um, 
the uh, parameters or making it a better sample or a synth, if you like. Um, so yes, new guitar You're talking sounds. About like adjusting envelope controls, maybe send effects or stuff like that for the samples that are built in there. That's a ma yes, absolutely. That's a major iteration. I think that requires an overhaul. We can't just start adding more pages, but we will have better guitars for 2.5. But um, let's just say next year, um, you know. Keep uh, an eye out. Yeah, it's it's going to be it's 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 just going to be hopefully much better. Um, so these updates, two obviously two four point one is going to be a free update. Two point five, this you're saying it's a major update, but that's still going to be free for people who have Scalar two already, right? Yes, absolutely. Phenomenal. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. And I was speaking on synths. Isn't Carbon Electra uh, one of the synths you're using in your demo? Of what your synth? Yes. Yes, yeah, a synth I developed um, uh, about uh, probably five years ago now. I mean, that's that's wild. So, I mean, clearly you're someone who already has the background there. And if you do start to integrate actual synthesis into Scalar in some way, or maybe some sort of uh, like sister plugin that connects automatically or something, I don't know. But I, I'm looking forward to what you guys dream up. If obviously, because Carbon Electra has been a beast for many years, and Scalar Two has taken over the world. So, when you get when you start to combine those two um, professions, as it were, it's going to be phenomenal, David. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I just want to announce the winner. We got a winner of Scalar Two is Univerbalisti. Univerbalisti. That's U N I V E R B A L I S T I. You are the winner of Scalar 2. What I need you to do is email support at pluginboutique.com and let them know that you won uh, and send us a link to your Twitch account just so we can verify everything. Perfect. And that's in the chat as well if you come back later. But David, I'm going to let you go. I know you're a busy man. I know you got a whole day ahead of you. Uh, as you can see, it's getting dark where I am now, but you, you're ready to start the day after a nice live stream here with us. But thank you again for, for coming by and doing a great demo for us and letting us know the inside scoop about Scalar 2, my friend. Thanks, mate. And thank you very much personally for helping me set up the whole streaming and appreciate all your efforts in uh, guiding through. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, look forward to um, fielding some questions on our forums. Absolutely wonderful. So everybody who's watching, uh, we, this will be archived on Bport's YouTube. So if you missed the beginning and you want to check it out or if you want to rewatch David's um, session where he made some incredible drum and bass in about 20 minutes. You can go over there and watch the entire stream as an archive. But other than that, I'd like to say on behalf of Plug and Boutique and Beatport, I'm Joshua Casper. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you in the next stream. Bye bye.